Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you. Except to mean of angels messenger and except to mean of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Dr. Monique E. Hunt. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching this show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being there. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation, angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Dr. Monique Hunt, about how she uses the wisdom from the ancestors to clear generational trauma by using the healing power of your life story and your ancestors' guidance. Now, Dr. Monique E. Hunt is a spiritual teacher and chief intuitive officer of the Ancestral Wisdom School. She is an ancestral story clearer who uses the healing power of your life stories and your ancestors' guidance to help you create a clear path for your living your soul's purpose. By using her gifts as an, as an ancestor griot and third generation intuitive, Dr. Monique specializes in and uses ancestor connection and communication in her ancestral story clearing and healing sessions. She helps you release historical grief and blocks embedded in your DNA and passed down through your lineage. As the founder of the International Ancestor Wisdom School, Dr. Monique has guided hundreds of ancestor training workshops, sacred ceremonies and talks around the world. As a sacred celebrant, Dr. Monique custom designed sacred ceremonies to help you partner with your ancestors to create healthy relationships, self-love and vibrant health. I think I can hear some feedback there. Enabling you to fulfill your soul's purpose. Dr. Monique's devotion to the ancestors comes from her training with her uh, ancestors both in the physical and spirit form. Her doctorate in metaphysical, metaphysical counselling, training in spiritual teachers from around the globe, and two decades of implementing the teachings of ancestor reference in her life. Through her story clearing sessions and ancestor veneration ceremonies, she has helped hundreds of clients reconnect with their known and unknown ancestors for healing and guidance. So, without further delay, hello, Dr. Monique, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm well. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for having me here. I'm happy and excited about our discussion today. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you, thank you for agreeing to come on. So, before we get into this fascinating conversation, then I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Dr. Monique and I want to be part of this conversation. So, please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions live or once the show has finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to it so you don't get updates on all my recordings. So, Dr. Monique, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how um, wisdom from the ancestors can clear generational trauma? Well, I have been working with my ancestors, I would say, all of my life. <laughs> <laughs> third generation intuitive. So I have grandmothers and great grandmothers that were healers and intuitives and, and really imparted this wisdom and knowledge. Uh, and so I had always felt this real deep connection, but I didn't quite know what to do with it in terms of, you know, utilizing it on a professional level and you know helping more people with it professionally so i went into the engineering field and spent time as an engineer and then suddenly i started getting these messages from my ancestors that i was really supposed to be doing this work and sharing this work with more people and helping more people and so i went on this journey of self-discovery of learning working with spiritual teachers connecting with the ancestors and my guides in the spirit world and really starting to understand what they wanted me to share, what their messages were, what I needed to bring to my clients. 
And so I left the corporate world, started my own practice and started sharing this work, but on a very small scale, not on a very large scale. So over a period of time, I started getting more and more messages. And then through a series of meditations and just um, spiritual practices and time with my ancestors, the ancestral story clearing program came through and what they wanted me to share and helping me understand that many of the stories that our ancestors experienced, this, their lived stories are embedded in our DNA. They are part of our experiences. And some of those stories are very powerful stories of resilience and strength and courage. And so we want to embrace those. We want to utilize those to help us move our lives forward. Also, some of those stories are embedded in traumas, in wounds, in disappointments, and grief, and loss, and addiction, and abuse, and you know all of these different stories that are also showing up in our lives now. And over a series of uh, meditations and work that I did with the ancestors, what I started noticing was how their stories were showing up in my life and the things that I needed to do to begin to clear those stories and how to heal those stories. And I started doing the work with them to heal those stories. And I started noticing my life shifting and changing and you know, more happiness, more peace, um, more clarity about what I wanted to share, what I wanted to do in the world, more clarity about my purpose, better connections with people. And I decided, you know, this is really working. This is bad. <laughs> This is really working. So I started working with a few friends and family members and started sharing this work a little bit more and working with them. And what we discovered is that there are nine karmic stories that people are, um, that our ancestors have experienced. Some ancestors have experienced more of the nine stories than others. You know, some of our lineages contain all of the nine stories. And for some, there's only, you know, a few of the, the stories but our ancestors lived any of these nine stories. And as a result, we are carrying those stories and those stories are impacting our relationships, our prosperity and abundance. They're impacting uh, how we deliver our purpose. They're impacting our happiness and how we live in the world. And so we want to understand what those stories are and clear those stories so that now we can not only make our lives happier, make our lives easier and smoother and more peaceful and function on a level that we want to, but we can also now encourage them to come and help us and to be that source of guidance and inspiration to get their support and their help, to get their help with opening doors that we feel may be closed, to get their help you know, uncovering problems and providing us with solutions and helping us understand what the blocks are. And so when we work with those nine karmic stories, one of the things that I'm able to do is I'm able to connect with your ancestors to determine which of the nine stories are showing up in your life and which ancestors need healing with those stories in order for them to support you and provide you with guidance in your life. What we find usually is that if we are experiencing something in our lives, a, a particular story, let's say we're having relationship challenges and, and maybe we have a relationship that isn't working, then usually somewhere in our lineage, our ancestors have experienced a story that's very similar to what we're, we are experiencing. And what we can do is begin to clear that story and clear the pain from that story. So those ancestors can become master ancestors. And now we can invite those ancestors to help us work on the story that we need to shift and change and heal. And that's how we bring in the guidance and the support from the ancestors and help us live happier, more peaceful, joyful lives. And so I've been working with the ancestors for many, many years. And I work with the ancestors that are up to about 14 generations back, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, and we are able to connect and 
find out what healing ancestors may have been in the person's lineage. We're able to connect and determine um, what ancestors may have the courage and have the wisdom now that we can invite in who are very evolved and healed ancestors who we can invite in now. And then, like I said, we can identify those ancestors that are still embedded in their stories and are still dealing with the wounds of their stories that we need to support and help them release those stories so that they can become more evolved. Yeah, so that's sort of a summary of what I do. Well, that, that's, that's an awful, that's an awful, awful lot. So, um, and it's quite interesting where you um, said about some of the gifts that they had, because I think a lot of people, when they think of um, ancestral healing um, and healing the lineage, think that it's just healing the, the traumas and not necessarily that there has been that there have been uh, have been traumas. It could just be that they want to come through and help you get yes. get clear on guidance. Yes, yes, that's true. There are ancestors that just want to have that connection with you, and they want to provide the guidance. You know, they're waiting for that invitation to come in. And one of the ways that we invite them in is through spiritual practice, through um, meditation but also with an altar. You know, that's one of the first things I have my clients do when we start working together is to create an altar to honor the ancestors. And we're able to determine from those ancestors that want to be invited in, what types of things to include on the altar. What, what items will welcome the ancestors in and welcome the ancestors in to provide guidance. So you are, are correct. We do have these amazing ancestors who have lived these stories who have either healed from the stories or maybe they were, you know, stories that they overcame in their physical lives that are now ready to help us do the same in our lives. That's, 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 pre that's pretty cool. In fact, um, uh, Jenna May, um, who's watching has also said, cool. <laughs> so that, that is, pre that is, that is Thank pretty cool. You. Yeah. And I think Jackie is saying, was saying hello with a, uh, with a little, with a little smiley face, or lots of uh, smiley faces. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, it's really nice. and obviously um, you um, answer Jenna May because she, um, she said looking forward to hearing more. So interested in this topic. So that's been so, so so Jenna May, if you have any um, you know questions of your own that you're that you'd like to ask, yes. Um, Dr. Monique, then, then please, you know, do type them in, um, and we'll and we'll answer them on on screen for you. Right. So the so you say there's um, nine. Yes. Um, pans. So how did they come about? Or how did you find about those? And are they always the you know do they always fall in the same pattern or? Yeah. Well, the way that many of those came through is <clears throat> through my meditations and working with the ancestors and just my work overall in working with my clients for years. Um, I started in my practice in 1998. So, and prior to that, I was doing training in corporate America and still engaged with people and hearing their stories. I've always been fascinated by stories that people mm -hmm. tell me. I've always been interested, even as a kid, when the elders were talking, I was always interested in hearing their stories. So I've always listened to people's stories and over time in working with the ancestors, what they started revealing to me is that there are, most of our stories are rooted in these nine karmic stories and that the ancestors have experienced these nine karmic stories. So these stories started coming through as I was doing my own healing work. I noticed that these stories were coming through as I began to look at my own lineage you know, I have the beautiful gift of a book that my mother and my aunt created of our family history. And this book contains stories from the ancestors, interviews that they did. And as I'm looking at the stories in the book and I'm studying my lineage, I'm noticing that certain stories are showing up. And then as I started working more with my clients and listening to the challenges that they were experiencing and helping them overcome some of the challenges, 
I started noticing that there were certain stories that were coming up that were embedded in these nine karmic stories. And so that's how we started um, really looking at the nine karmic stories and how they started being revealed. And some of them were revealed during my dreams. Some of them were revealed in um, you know meditation. Some of them I discovered working with my clients and then confirmed with the ancestors that yes, these are some of the stories. So I'm supposing that some people might wanna know what the nine karmic stories are. I think I think they they might want to. Okay, okay, they may want to know. So sometimes yeah. I have to go and look because sometimes I'll forget. But we're abuse, abandonment, addiction, and betrayal, poverty, illness, grief, violence, and shame. Those are the nine. Did mm. I go too fast? <laughs> so those are the nine, and that's how those are the nine that normally show up. What I've noticed is that when people are experiencing relationship challenges, usually the three that show up are betrayal, abuse, and abandonment. Hmm. People will share with me one or all of those stories that have shown up in their own lives. But then also when I start to connect with the ancestors, I'm finding that the ancestors, that's where some of the challenges for them began in their relationships. And then when we're talking about abundance and prosperity, we're looking at poverty, illness, and addiction. Those three tend to um, be closely related to people experiencing um, money challenges, financial challenges, and a lack of opportunities. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is currently experiencing illness or poverty or violence, but it, it usually means that somewhere in the lineage, this was something that was happening with many of the ancestors. Now we also look at historically. So we're looking at, you know, the traumas and the wounds that the ancestors may have experienced, but we're also looking at historically what may have happened. So historically there may have been violence, there may have been illness as a result of, you know, famine or some particular disease outbreak that took place. So when we're looking at the um, a person's financial situation or lack thereof, or we're looking at um, opportunities, if they're just feeling like they're being blocked and they don't have any opportunities, those are usually the karmic stories that we look at, poverty, illness, and um, addiction. And then when we're looking at a person's happiness and how they're thriving in their life purpose, or if they need more clarity around what that is, the karmic stories that we're looking at are shame, grief, and violence. Once again, that doesn't necessarily mean that a person is experiencing violence currently in their lives, but it could mean that they've either experienced it in the past or somewhere along their lineage, violence played a huge part in, in their family lineage. And that violence could have come from war. It doesn't necessarily mean that they were involved in a violent act. It could have come yeah. from someone going to war and you know never coming home or coming home and, and dealing with the after effects of being at war. So those are the ones that show up. And usually people will say to me, okay, well, I'm experiencing, um, you know, I, a lot of times it's relationship challenges and, or people will say, you know, we're having a history of mental illness and addiction in the family. And I'd like to learn how to clear those. And immediately I'll be taken to an ancestor who probably experienced some sort of addiction along the way. And if that ancestor, ancestor experienced um, addiction, then we can actually do the healing and the clearing work to help that hand ancestor, if that ancestor is still embedded in that story, helping to release that so that we elevate that ancestor and now bring that ancestor forward as a wise guide to help with maybe addiction um, that may be happening in the family at, at currently, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I like I like that that when you sort of like um, you you know you help the ancestor heal, they're then able to step forward in their power with their knowledge of of what they of how they coped with it, what they did, and they can bring that to help the the, the healing. Now, I, I think I think that's. Um, uh, that you know that that's that's pretty cool that they they can they can do that. Um, and Joy, who's uh, 
joined us has said, oh, me too, love listening and great stories always embraced. Cheers. And I think well, she's- Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, so this is so beyond interesting. We must connect. We will, and I can't wait. Cheers. Oh, thank so, you, Joy. So, so that's pretty good. And do you find um, I know when um, when I do my work and we work on um, ancestral and lineage, and lineage stuff, that when you've kind of like healed that, it doesn't carry on in the next generation. That you've kind of like then clear, cleared it for the future. Um, does that happen with your work as well? It does. It does. And I think that's one of the beautiful gifts is that when we do this work, that we are giving a gift to current and future generations by clearing these stories that now won't show up in future generations and won't impact future generations. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And what I find is that oftentimes I will work with people who are being called by the ancestors, by their ancestors to sort of be the family healer, to be the one that does this work. And oftentimes when I say that to someone where I'm you know, getting that message from the ancestors, they're like, oh, that's such a burden. I'm like, no, you don't need to go out and personally heal everybody in your lineage. Yeah, they go far across this country, that country, yeah, that country. You don't need to do any of that. You do the work for yourself and it impacts your, um, your, your family members. And so I do get, get people that their ancestors will just be very clear to me, we really need this to happen and we need her or him to be that person in the lineage that does this clearing, that does this work. So it's pretty powerful. Yeah, it, it is. And I, I think what some people forget is that energy is so linear and you can just send energy anywhere and it will work on any timeline or, yes. you, you know, if, if you if you send it now and the person can't receive it until they're asleep, then it will just wait until they're asleep and then it will go in. Absolutely. Absolutely. When, when they do. Um, and Jenna May has put, oh, it's a, quite a long one. Um, so let's see. Great stuff. I love hearing all this. Here's a question for later. Um, so if we can't answer it on there, we, we will get back to do it. And I've been doing a ton of ancestral karmic personal healing for Angelic Craigie. I love Angelic Craigie, of course, and other ways. But I'm currently working to strengthen my connections and identify who is coming to visit and help me in my lineage so I can create more of a personal relationship. Do you have any tips or exercises for us to help clear some of those channels or begin those relationships? Absolutely. Great question. Thank you. So one of the first things I, like I mentioned that I have my clients do is create an altar in the home. And oftentimes people think, oh, it needs to be this huge, big. I have clients that create box altars, clients who may be dealing with a lot of transitioning where they're moving from place to place or they travel a lot, will create just a small box with the, that creates an altar. So an altar can be as big or small as you mm. want. But creating an altar that honors the ancestors and welcomes the ancestors. And on that altar, there's some basic things. If you have photos of your ancestors, particularly ancestors that you may have had a positive relationship with, if you didn't have a positive relationship, you may want to leave those off temporarily. But ancestors that you had a really positive relationship with or ancestors that you may have heard stories about, you can put those ancestors on your altar. You can also bring in the ancestors that are um, historical ancestors. So they may not necessarily be part of your lineage, but they can be ancestors that have inspired you. So if there's someone in history that inspires you or an author, let's say you're wanting to write a book and you're feeling a little stuck. If there's an author that is now in the spirit world that you would like to invite to support you with your writing, you can bring that information about that ancestor to your altar a candle, glass of water, um, and anything that you feel that you'd like to add. I usually encourage something that represents earth, um, something that represents um, your ancestors that may be kind of a physical object. Let's say you have a piece of jewelry. Um, I know like in on my altar, I have um, pearls that my grandmother used to wear 
and I have pearls that she actually gave me that I leave on the altar. Um, you may be able, and uh, there's a little doily napkin also that is lace that my grandmother had. So there's different things that you may have that were passed down from generation to generation that you can include on your altar. But even if you don't, if there's something that um, you have that you feel is connected to the ancestors in some way, bring it to your altar. And then what you can do with your altar now is add different offerings to the altar. Let's say that you have a family recipe that your ancestors just absolutely loved. You can actually make that recipe and just put a small bite of it on your altar. I know my father loved coconut. So right now I added some, just recently added coconut to my <laughs> altar. Um, I have ancestors that love chocolate. So I occasionally will put a piece of chocolate on the altar. These are all things that just let them know that you are welcoming them and that you want them to be a part of your life. And so those are some things, if there's particular ancestor that you want to connect with, then anything that you have or that you know of that that ancestor may have enjoyed, then bring that to the altar, have that on your altar. So the altar for me would be my quickest answer and the thing that you could do fairly quickly to invite your ancestors to be a part of your life and hear their stories. The other one would be in your dreams. The ancestors love to come and communicate with you in your sleep. And one of the other things that I encourage my clients to do is make sure that they're sleeping without a lot of noise interference at night. So that means turning the TV off for some people who sleep with the TV on. Yeah, I don't have a TV in my bedroom at all. I don't either. Took it out a long time ago. And so I... Um, I encourage people to make sure that you're sleeping without a lot of background noise. And before you go to sleep, just reach out, call out to the ancestors, let them know what may be a challenge or something that you're working on that you need support with. Then share that with them and ask them to come through in your dreams and provide you with the information. And here's the thing, you may wake up in the morning and go, I don't remember anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything you know, there may be nothing, but allow yourself to go through the day. And sometimes those messages start to show up in things that you see, things that you experience, things that you read. You may be in the grocery store and you look at those rag nags on the, you know, yeah. the grocery stores you're checking out. And there may be a message that shows up. You may open a book, you may hear a song. So just paying attention to the, um, the little signs and symbols as you're going throughout your day. And continue to do this until you start to feel a connection to your hearing their messages. Creating a relationship with your ancestors is like creating relationship with your physical friends. It takes an investment of your time and your energy to do it. And sometimes those relationships, you know, they just instantly connect. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer for them to connect. They hear you, guaranteed, they hear you, they are hearing your intention and they will find a way to reach out to you. And that may show up in different ways for different people. For some people, like in my case, I can channel the ancestors, hear their voices, receive their information, but I also receive the information while I'm sleeping. Um, my dissertation was for my, um, for my doctorate was channeled through the, from the ancestors. So it was messages that came through in my writing. So through automatic writing. So there's different ways that they'll come through and it's different for each person. And that's one of the things when we work together is I'm able to identify which way they want to connect with you, how they want to connect with you. And then we build practices around that to help you develop your ability to connect with them based on the way they want to connect with you. Yeah. We, 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 which makes absolute um, sense. And, and again, it's something, you know, if you, um, you know, you, you, you can't, you know, you can't connect with um, Dr. Monique or something, you know, just try the different ways, you yes. know, ask them in the different ways, you know, one week concentrate on dreams, you know, another week, um, you know, concentrate on meditation, another week concentrate on songs from the, from the, from the radio, just work, you know, it's, 
trial and error to work out which one works works best for them because you might have an ancestor who absolutely loves singing and the way they want to connect with you is through songs you know they're not going to come in a dream or or yes. in writing as thing. they want to sing art. to you yes art is another one yeah i find that i have clients that um some of them are artists and so they're the ancestors will come through through their art and then i have others that say they have no artistic ability whatsoever but those ancestors love to connect with them when they're just doodling or scribbling around and you know there's different ways and you try the different ways and see which one feels the best for you and don't give up that's the other thing you know oftentimes i'll hear people say well i tried and i tried i tried for weeks and it didn't happen don't give up just like you wouldn't you know you you'll continue to work at building your relationships with your friends and family just continue to work with the relationship and try different things yeah because it may be that your ancestors are a little bit shy yes and they they know they, 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 they've never had the confidence to come right. forward and and it right. takes it, it takes a long time to you know it's like when you get a new pet or something you know it takes time you have to have patience yes yeah, and the other thing I tell people, there's no right or wrong way. You know, you'll hear people say, well, you have to do it this way. Well, in my belief, there's no right or wrong way. Just try different ways and see what works for you. Yeah. And Jenna May says, such great ideas. Thanks so much. Oh, you're uh, welcome, Jenna May. And, and, thank you for, and thank you for asking the question, Jenna May. Um, you know and if anyone else has got any questions before we finish the show that you want to ask you know you know type them in and if you think of something after the show's finished still type it in because right. uh, um, both of us will be going back in to to check any messages that that come through afterwards um anyway yes. um uh you know no we, you know with that so um as you know i do guided meditation and angel card reading so each week i like to ask my guest whether they would like a mini guided meditation or an angel card so dr monique what would you like me to do this week i think i want an angel card <gasps> why not we like angel cards we just we just we just, we just love angel cards everyone always chooses angel cards i don't actually know why i ask people because everyone wants one angel card. Well, it's interesting because I was going back and forth. I was like, meditation, angel cards. And I was like, well, I do a lot of meditation, but I don't do anything with angel cards. So let's do angel cards. Let's do some angel cards. Okay. So I'll just cleanse so quick, Bless. Um, now, all those that watch me regularly know that when I do the cards, I don't do the cards to predict the future. When I do cards, it's what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time because I'm very much working with the present. So um, like Monique, even though I work with the uh, um, with past life stuff, um, that's to take you back in time to heal so that you're, you don't have those issues in the present. And when I take you into future lifetimes, it's so that you understand what's going on. So you're not worried in the present. So everything always comes back to the present. So that's how we do the cards. So beautiful. What does Dr. Monique and everyone who's watching this live or at late date need to know? And that one kind of like um, came out. It's very interesting. Unknown territory. You're exactly where you need to be. Wow. Let's forget that. In there. Nice. So it, it's, it's, it's basically saying, it's, it's basically um, saying that, you know, don't worry if you're not quite sure of some of the stuff going on at, at the moment and it seems a little bit strange or weird to you and it's like it's a little bit out of my comfort zone you're actually you you really are where you should be at this at this moment in time so don't worry about it yeah. uh, you know and if, and if you look at it you know we've got an owl and we've got a bird there so mm -hmm. you know so ancestors are coming through to guide you on your path along the way mm-hmm and that so 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 they're all there for you and that so yeah don't 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 worry you are um all of you that are watching this you're on your you're on you're where you're supposed to be at the moment you're on the right path you're going the right track so don't worry 
and you've got lots of help coming coming around for you. Wonderful. And, Thank you very much. Ah, you're welcome. So, um, Dr. Meek, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Um, the one thing that I didn't mention, a lot of times people will say to me, well, what if I'm adopted or mm -hmm. what if I don't know my ancestors? And I just want you to know that it doesn't matter if you know them or not, it, that's not important. What's important is that you establish that connection with them so that you can invite them in to help you and support you and guide you. And if you are adopted, you have your um, blood lineage that you can connect with, but you also take on some of the energy of your adopted family. So you can connect with them as well and you can invite their ancestors into your life too. So you can work with both ancestors and you can also, as I mentioned before, and you can work with ancestors in history or ancestors of others that really inspired you. So if your friend's great grandfather was an inspiration to you and you felt connected to him, you can invite him in and, and ask him to come and support you and help you and help guide you. So that would be one of the things that is important. And then the last thing I'll share is we don't have to only ask the ancestors to help us on the huge things. We can ask the ancestors to help us on little things. Like I needed a um, plumber at one point. And I was having a hard time finding a plumber. Now my father, he, he was he was my plumber, my electrician. He did all the work on my car. He was my home builder. He was everything. And he could do all of that. In fact, the joke was, if he can't repair it, then it can't be fixed because that's just who he, he was. So he when he passed away and I needed a plumber, I was like, oh my goodness, I actually have to go and find someone. And through a series of challenges, I was not getting the right person. And I stopped and I just said, dad, we need your help. I need a plumber. I need someone in here and I need someone in quick. I need an honest person. And I called upon him and within a, a few minutes, there was a number that came through. There was information that came. I called this person. He said, I can be there um, shortly. He came, he did the work. He gave me different options. He was really friendly and kind. And when he handed me his card, his name was Angel. Ah, <laughs> brilliant. So make sure you invite your ancestors for little things like that, little challenges that are taking place in your life. They're available to help you with that as well. So that's what I'd like to leave you with is that they're there. Yeah. Oh, that that's 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 absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and we quite often forget forget about the um, little things. You know, it's, it's like with angels as well. People think you have to have great crises, and it's right. not. You know, but the, no. all all angels, ancestors, spirits want is for you to recognize and connect with them. So if you need a parking space, ask them. Yes, yes, yes. And that they're more they're more than willing to help you if they can. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so brilliant so everyone i hope you enjoyed this and found it insightful in the words of wisdom dr monique um, has given you help you further in your journey so dr monique if people want to connect with you how do they do that they can connect with me at my website at drmonique.com that's d-r-m-o-n-i-q-u-e.com and if you go to the um to go to my website and you click on the resources, you'll find that there's actually a free resource that I give is three spiritual practices to, to connect with your ancestors and two guided meditations oh, that wow. will help you with a poverty and abandonment um, stories that you can clear. So if you go there, you'll be able to sign up and get all of that information. Oh, that's brilliant. Um... Yeah, that, that's brilliant. Thank you for that offer. Um, and Jenna May says, thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna May. Thank you for being here and for your question. Yes, mo mo most definitely. Be because, you know, this, this show, are, um, you know, does run with, with the people that watch it, whether live or at a later date. So even if you're watching this on the replay and you put, you know, and you, you ask a question, 
um you know it all it all adds up to the show and gives us something to else to chat you know to answer your questions rather than just having a conversation between us that could go off on tangent or anywhere else that that, that you might that you might want to go so everyone i would like to thank you so much for watching this and i would also like to invite you to share this video as i'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you. Feel free to reach out and connect with me um, and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call um, where we can find out more about each other and how I can help you take charge of your destiny. And don't forget, um, this show takes place every uh, Monday at 8 p.m. UK time. Um, so please feel free to uh, come along and tune into any of my other shows. And Dr. Monique, it's been so brilliant. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on my show. It's been a fascinating conversation and I'm, I'm really grateful that you came along. So thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me. And thank you for everyone that has listened live and who listens to the replay. Thank you for being here. Brilliant. And uh, Joy also says, Thank you, ladies. I will share it. Cheers. Thank, thank you, Joy. Thank you very much. Oh, that, that's lovely. So everyone, have a wonderful rest of an evening, day, depending what, what part of the world you're in. Um, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. So bye, everybody. Bye.